your celebrity is messing up and they are calling him out. Then you see somebody calling him out, they're like, eh, sure, you know, go mind your business. Sure, you, know, you know, it's also, you can tell that they also don't have a way to. What up, people? It's your favorite podcast, man. Back again with another one. My name is Michael Shonariwo. And I'm Murray Welcome, Koya. And we are the Menism Gang. Back again. Thank you, guys. that have been rocking with us. We appreciate you. Make sure you follow us on all audio platforms, Spotify, Apple Music. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's now Menism's Podcast, so you can catch us. And yeah, man, how's everything now, buddy? No, how life? Not bad. I mean, we're just recovering from the uh twitter banter with whiskey davido that whole seen. saga you didn't even you did i've seen i've not seen uh, yeah I, I mean I, of course i just i followed the stories just to see what exactly everybody is just be, everybody is just beefing now i'm just like bruh yeah nobody has time for i i used i before i used to be on that way like fire for fire but now it's just like for making money yeah, I mean, I also feel like it's PR still, you know, like it's still, because let's be honest, everything these days now, once it's controversial, it's definitely selling. The thing is, it's not even them, you see, uh, the industry has a way of doing it, you understand, like you said, because yeah. like, like in December, you guys are just hugging it out. Number two, both of you are not going to fight when you see, like, like y'all, but I don't know, I they're not about that life, in terms of, we go fight, fight, oh, yeah, fight, yeah, maybe sure. da- like David will be like, okay, I want to like, but first off, nobody in your camp is going to allow that, so it's like, what's the point? And really, is the followers that carry the beef, because they oh, say they want two things, then they just let the armies now take over, and it's crazy to see the impact, like, WizKid fans, David, it's crazy to see how people rock with it, which is good at the same time, you know, but it's good, like, um, that's how impactful they are. You know what? Let's, let's talk about this just a little bit. What do you think about Nigeria's standom? Like, so basically, like how Nigerians and how they are fans of you know the celebrities they are fans of. Mm. What do you think about that relationship between you know the fans and the celebrity? And I'm asking this because this is beyond just music. It's also into just the actors, culture, the culture of yeah. Big Brother. You know, um, Big Brother housemates. You've seen how toxic these people... You don't know this celebrity first. I mean, the only thing you know about them is what they fed you on their social media, right? Yeah. Which is, one, their performance, which is their arts, Mm -hmm. and two, the part of their lifestyle that they've chosen to show you and that you've also taken. Yeah. But you see people... Have you you seen how toxic Whiskey, Davido, Burner Boy fans are? On Twitter, you will see them saying... Maybe maybe if I just... If I mistakenly... Let's say I mistakenly open my Twitter and I go, oh yeah, Whiskey is mid... Bro, my account will probably be <laughs> suspended by the end of the day based on the fact that people just, your papa is me. I'm just like, I get it. You people love the artist. We get it. Mm. Right. But where does that come from? Like, where, where does that passion? Because I only see it when they're fans. Beyond that, Nigerians don't show that passion as much as anything else. What? In terms of celeb culture? Yeah. And when I say so that, like, just how much they are fans of. You see them contributing money to buy somebody who is better off a car, so things like that. You know? Meanwhile, you don't know what you're eating the next. So this is this meal, is what but... I'll say for me. It's one. It's to be honest, is is going to sound very harsh when I say, it, but it's poverty. And the reason I say that is not poverty. It's like the mentality in terms of the poverty mindset. In terms of we're all coming, like we all experience it, because unfortunately we're in Nigeria and we see the reality of Nigeria and the way to go in terms of the nine to five routes or the professions that were praised back in the day your doctors lawyers back in the day those were the celebs those were the people you praised Mm -hmm. but because of the way the country has gone now in terms of those jobs are not as rewarding in nigeria to a lot of people now compared to the way it was back in the day the one that is rewarding is the celeb culture you see how on the television screens, on the social media, the life they live, you aspire to be like that. And a lot of us is like, again, is that story coming from the ground up in terms of there's a point you could have been at your lowest. You see all these people the way they are and you strive to be them. So in a place like Africa, let me not just use Nigeria, in a place like Africa, that poverty mentality now makes it even bigger because it's not to say it doesn't happen in other parts of the world too. You understand? Because it's not like I'm knocking down my own people. Of course not. But I'm seeing the reality of us. In America now, you, unless you're literally a Beyonce and all that, and even those people that go crazy over those fans and all that, a lot of them still go to their nice house and go and sleep. 
Like all those evil girls you see on the uh, red carpet. Oh my God, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Somebody's still going home to a nice bedroom house. So, and they left their house. Somebody that's comfortable living still left their house to come and stand in the cold. Oh my God, Taylor. But then in Nigeria now, it's not somebody that's coming from a good home that's going to go and be standing. Say, David, David. Is that person that's on the street that they don't know where their next meal might be coming from or their... Con- their their reality is not where they want it to be. So when they see a David Doe, it's like fuck. Or right. more, this is this is literally what I want to be. Like I'm actually looking at it. So you go crazy. Now the now the big brother shit, that thing makes no damn sense to me. I don't understand it until today. You can explain to me from now to tomorrow. I have a lot of friends that have done Big Brother. And they're all cool people, though, to me, you understand. And even to them, it's not like they ask for the fans or something they're just living their life in terms of they've gotten on big brother now they have a platform and they're just continuing to live their lives but then the fans come with it so they've accepted that but the behavior of the fans is not like they're controlling them those fans are literally like they were ready to do anything for these people because they were watching them on big brother because you spent all your time there because like i say unfortunately the conditions of the country now, especially the poverty mentality, is a lot of people now are aspiring to be like these people because they have nothing. Compared to abroad where the people that even aspire, not to say people don't look at, like there's people in the ghettos, as they say, quote unquote, that look at people. But those people now, like I say, because America, your condition, they're still lights in your house in the ghetto for some people. Some people, the lights are off. But... Do you understand where I'm going? Like, yeah, in the first world country, yeah, is not yeah, as bad as Nigeria, from. that slums, basically. So, right. the way you look at it is like, ah, me personally, I've never been big on the celeb culture here just because, I guess, I've been blessed that I've been around them since I've been in Nigeria. Like, even when I moved to Nigeria at 17, I was going to the club with my older brothers that were partying with David Doe, Whiskey, Wine, each other. That's like, you get what I'm saying? So, I've seen all the celeb. I've been in the award shows where I've sat to them from a teenager upwards. And then even now as an adult, it's weird now when I see certain celebs. I know you now. You used to come to my party now. Uh, before you blew, I knew you. And there's a relationship. So it's never like something big to me. The only celebs I can say I will shake for. And I've actually not... I've met a few. I've never, it's maybe... I won't lie. I'll shake for Beyonce small. <laughs> I'll, I'll shake. I won't lie. Just because I know I've had a crush on her since I was a child. Since Destiny's Child. So I can't front and just be like, hey, babe, how are you? You good? Like, nice to meet you. I mean, obviously, I could do that bad guy. Like, hey, Miss Beyonce, how are you? Nice to meet you. But inside, hey, like this, the way I'll be shaking. I'll say, God damn. If I see Kelly Rowland, same thing. Shake. Because these are women I love. But males and all that, like, it's more of respect I'll have. Like, you know, so like if I met Jay-Z, if I met these people now, it was more of respect. Like, oh, nice to meet you, Mr. Mr. Combs. I said Mr. Combs. That's Diddy. Um, <laughs> hey. <laughs> see it's good i got it you see it's good i messed up now so that way when i meet jay-z later now what's what's jay-z's last day carter, carter mr yeah. carter yes nice to meet you mr carter my name is michael Sonari. Nice. that's how i've carried myself since like whenever i meet celebs and all that so i yeah i just went on a rant with it because yeah. again i see i i when you said that question i was thinking and just saying like everything it's crazy like, like any yeah. and even i'll say even now like some people find it weird too like when i meet them because you have this and it's so ironic because i made a song called celeb and all that stuff like out of tiktok but even when people meet me and they'll be like oh my god nice to meet you so i watch your show i'm just like yo nice to meet you but it's more like i'm still a human like you like obviously i know who i am don't get it twisted but i'm not about to go and say oh praise me all that because bro it can be gone tomorrow i guess that's my mind all this stuff you are saying there's some people you see that were raining for 10 years N- next thing you know <laughs> You know, you know what my take on is? I mean, I definitely agree with the parts where they aspire to be these people. But what my take on this whole thing is, is that apart from the aspirations, you see what we actually call influence that we just say social media influence, blah, blah, blah. We actually don't deep what the word influence really entails in the grand scheme of like things in whatever field you're in, be it an actor, big brother, music. Now, I'll take, say, for example, a Whiskey fan, right? A Whiskey fan would listen to Whiskey because of course, you start being a fan of a celebrity by various reasons. Mm. It might not even be their trade. It might, not, it might be the personality. Maybe you watch one uh, interview and you just love the way he carried himself. It might not even be his music, right? But there's always something. And that something always stems from relativity. So you can either understand where he was coming from, which mm-hmm. is why a lot of people that, you know, have, a lot of celebrities that started from the ghetto, in quotes, right? Started from the ghetto and now rise into this uh, level of stardom. 
are, a lot, are aspirations to a lot of younger people who are also living in the slums, living in the ghetto. Because they see that there's that possibility. Somebody from our level who could understand what we are currently going through has been able to... It's right. You know, and what's crazy is, is the thing is, even if you, the way you said it, you've seen it because look at somebody like Ashaken now, for example. There's a whole bunch of people that went to university with that guy yeah. in school. That guy has been performing and making music since. Yeah. There's, and you know, in Nigeria, one thing I've noticed about is like, we, you connect with so many people without even realizing it. Like, you meet so many people, especially in a place like Lagos that's so small. You go meet this person, meet this person. Then next year, you know, let's say the next year, you don't see that person don't blow. Eh? Exactly. And you see this, so this, so this, that aspect of, the aspiration which is looking up to them want to be like them is one side right but i feel like the toxicity really comes from the continuous you know fandom of that person by whatever values um in most cases it's when you start going close into like knowing the person's personality knowing their backstory knowing their so you create sentiments for them you know for example you can be a fan of someone because of the craft they do so i'm a fan of this person because you know they sing so well He's good with lyrics. You do this. Now, everything regarding that person stops at their craft because that's what I like about the person. Mm-hmm. Their personal life, I don't know much about it. I don't even try to know much about it. I don't know... No, my business brothers, unless I so actually like, get to know you. Exactly. So if I don't know you beyond that, I have no reasons to create any sentiment beyond that. I can fight for you if people say, that guy knows Sabi Singh. <laughs> do you understand? Then I cannot be like, nah, you guys be for real. Because but, that's where you focus on. Exactly. But if I've now gone beyond that and I've known them on a personal level, known how they take care of their mom, take care of their dad, you know, just how they treat their siblings, stuff like that, or how I've watched them elevate as they go on and I've really, really like tried to be part of their story, it, it makes you feel like you're also a family member, so to say. Family yeah. member, in quotes. And the problem with Nigerians is, have you seen how Nigerians back up other Nigerians, maybe when they're outside the country? Or maybe like uh, uh, somebody trying to say, maybe like, like maybe a South African trying to diss a Nigerian for whatever reason. Mm. Even people that don't know that Nigerian will start backing him up. No, but it's true. So, now, why are you talking about us? Yeah, so, so Niger- no, I'm saying <laughs> people have that, but Nigerians have that. There's a way they back up their own. And mm. so they, they add that factor but into see, the fandom. But you see, even though it's toxic, it's also good because we push our own. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I we've agree. made a lot. Now, it's up to you to maintain it. Yeah. But Because the thing is, we go support you. But if you mess up or if you fuck up, as we like to say, ah. More, so, but but that, own. now that's where I'm coming from now oh, that's where I'm getting to the fandom gets to a point where even when the person fucks up there's a way Nigerians know how to excuse it, especially the ones who are the core fans and that's where that's where the toxic fans come in because mm. you now have cases where your celebrity is messing up and they are calling him out then you see somebody calling him out they're like eh Shay you know go mind your business Shay you know you know it's also you can tell that they also don't have a way to back this person up okay let's so, also okay, so give an him. example now so like let's say this David situation that happened now Okay, well, I mean, I didn't want to like have to hammer on that. But no, I mean, we'll talk, being, it's public. It's not like we're hiding yeah, it. Yeah, it's so, public stuff. We're yeah. not talking about him. We're talking about the situation, situation. that's public. Okay, so, so, yeah. So, for example, I would say that, you know, I mean, that was pretty embarrassing, right? You know, having to put your wife out there in the spotlight. And, well, of course, he didn't want to, but his actions did. I right? got a conspiracy theory. And so, we'll get to it. <laughs> and so, he didn't want to, but his actions led to that point, right? And so... Because there's no way you wouldn't be messing around. You would be messing. You wouldn't be messing around, and people will still kind of come up with these videos or with these, you know, allegations from nowhere. So obviously his actions, you know, translated to how the whole thing spiraled out. Now my problem is that on it, accept that okay, yeah, your celebrity don't fuck up, and we move on. Okay. But when you start saying things like, "Oh, my, forget that thing," you how many how many chama you don't marry? How many you two can you take care of chama the way thinking of her? Do you think that he's not a man? That's where I start to draw the line because I'm like, if you, if because you're a fan of this person, you also grow this toxic side of you that loses values. That's you. That's why no matter the, what they do, it's still, so, so that's where I have the problem with. I have two sides. Nigerians. I don't know how, but how other people in other countries have. No, they do it. I mean, okay, but I'm saying they, Nigerians. I say I get where you're coming from because obviously we're Nigerians. We focus more on who, where we are. Yeah. In America, they do it. It's like when these rappers and all that get into a hell of trouble, especially in America, that you see law enforcement. This, yeah, 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 true. Baby yeah. mama, this domestic, this they still, they still they support find reason. Time, that. Yeah, so it happens everywhere. But our own is a bit more emotionally connected. But with what you said, there was two things I want to say with that. David. Thing. one here's my conspiracy theory that thing is planned here's why i said it because i looked at the timeline of even the last one now it could be true like that's why i said i have two sides i have my conspiracy theory side and then 
Omar, this is the real situation. Mm-hmm. Conspiracy theory side saying is Omar, those things are PR because mm-hmm. of the timing. Because remember the last time my guy was on tour, that girl came out. Right. Then this one now comes right before MSG, this girl comes out. So it's like, hmm. I mean, that, that's, that, that, that's my defense to say yo because when I saw the way this guy was celebrating with Chema after I'm just like uh, uh, I mean to be honest that's because it's when, a, it's cause a Chema also because they're not stupid too like they're, they're it's a it's a business it's a game the fans it's all a game you get what I'm saying so it's like even with the Chema thing yo that's his girl that girl is going to know everything the life that comes with this shit so if we tell you behind the scenes hey babe this is what's going to happen all that notice they never comment on anything because you're not supposed to but you let it play I let the fans say what they want guess what they're still going to buy that ticket they're still going to fill out them go fill it them go hold it down no be everybody that they insult on twitter that's not real life you go still sing that song i mean to be honest i actually see where you're coming from i, I guess it's because i see it as I mean, you're tarnishing someone's image for PR, but actually, that's no, what PR now, is. You see, you are tarn- see in this no, no, entertainment, I mean, that's what PR is. In this entertainment honest, industry PR now, eh? You see, bad PR also is good PR because you're saying tarnish the name. Yeah. The same girl, see, let's all stop lying to ourselves. It's very easy to point the finger and say this. Waiting your mama and papa at home, what are they doing? What are you doing that you've not just done yeah, as bad? No, I, I, I get that, I get that. And I guess it's because, again, I said for someone like me, I look at it from the oh you're, you're, you're the moral a, moral stand, and that's why I said exactly it's not for people like us where that side yeah, of the internet. Are you ready to drop your morals? It's for people that just know. Look, this is for the business. So that's that's my conspiracy there. side. Now the Makes other sense. side Makes of sense. if it's that. true, mm-hmm. then again I look at one side of I cannot point to the finger so quick because I am not perfect. And for any man, that slip up can happen at any time, bro. I'm not defending him. It's like I said, if it's true, it's wrong just because of the position he's in, in terms of you are a dude, you are a brand, you are a business, you are a mogul, you are one of the top. Th- I don't even, when I say top three now, for all these fans who even come for me, in terms of who are our biggest stars, David, Wizkid, Burner, we all know that. It's not about order, we know. So there's a level of carelessness you can't be doing. Or your team cannot be allowing because of who you are. That's why I said if this thing is really happening, forget and that's why I said there's still the chairman. But it's like with you now, because bro, you don't know what business or something can see this and say one day we want to pull the plug. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah, you, so. you get what I'm saying? Or the PR now, because at least the one thing I know is we're not like America where um uh, the people have power in terms of the, the people want to cancel you today. They'll do it in America. Oh, yeah, there are lots of artists. But then Africa there. now, that's why I said we're a bit more linear. That's why I said we're loyal in terms of when you mess up, we're not going to counsel you, but we go talk. So that's the only saving grace. That's why I said that's the saving grace he has. Who, who, who won't counsel David? Well, I mean, fair. Like, so again, I think um, because even outside of the larger celebrities, I, I guess this topic really stemmed more from the Big Brother fandom thing. Again, not 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 saying that Big Brother housemates shouldn't have the large fandom they have. Or but it's large, a bit toxic. Large, it's like, it's a what bit, is a really... bit toxic? <laughs> See, here's... The, and that's why I said I'm Bro. in two minds. Because one, I like Big Brother in terms of the platform it gives people. And I've seen a lot of people I know personally that have benefited from Big Brother, that they are doing well in their own individual fields now, that they're not even using Big Brother's name again. Mm-hmm. They are building businesses from their own. So that's why I like Big Brother. What I don't like, and I'm saying it as a fan and somebody that watches it, is like, some people... It's like, so what? Once you just enter TV and they celeb... That's and that's uh, that's where I'm coming from, right? So where's the talent? Where where is this? That's, that, that's what I said. Exactly if you are somebody, and that's what I said, I'm, I want to be clear in how I'm saying it. If you are somebody that you've gone, and that's what I said, I don't knock anybody that goes on the show. Go and do your. That's what I said. It's an opportunity. Go and knock it. So I'm not knocking the big brother people at all. I'm talking about the platform. Is the way everybody down says celeb because you've watched it on TV. That's it. And then you see the people that go crazy for the... That's the one, like you said, you're talking about. There's people that's like, oh, I like you. I watched your personal. I like your personality and everything you stood for. Fine. But like you said, the crazy fans now that are ready. Tasha, I'm ready. I'm ready to give out my money. I bought a house. The fuck? I, so that's, that's, and that's the bit I can't understand. Again, of course, not saying people can't live their lives the way they want. I, do what you want to. I guess it's, it's something I, I'm very interested in understanding. I want to know how. Because if you can, if you can tap into that... Now, devotion get... they have into those people and then channel it into something else now don't get me wrong go i won't lie to you because people used to tell me why, why, why don't you go for big brother me i mean same i'm uh, too private same it's not... in terms of 
Yes, I'm a quote unquote public figure with the content of the shit I yeah, do. Yeah, but I mean, but my life is yeah, private. Yeah, oh, I is beg. It's what I want you to see. I put. I don't like cameras on me twenty four seven. I don't. You don't need to know which girl I'm doing talking. Hell no. Like all that shit. So I respect them, but like you said, if ah oh man, I the jealous the, the small jealousy in me. The small. I want. Wow, well, human. You have it is. Ah, one life. I have to just go on Dutch when they buy me house. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, All right. I mean, again, if yeah, you want to give me one million, okay. As I've seen, and when is, I see it, I'm just like, fair. ah, that's but, the only reason for the benefit. No, you see, the funny, <laughs> the funny thing about this Big Brother one is that I feel like, bro, we talk about this for too long, but yeah, yeah. The funny thing about this Big Brother one is that we we spoke about how for celebrities, like for sorry, for music celebrities, you know, the fandom is more. Uh, it's it's more organic because the, you know they've seen the person grow, they follow their backstory, lifestyle, all that stuff, and so you know you can kind of understand where the passion comes from. Mm. Kind of understand. Also, there's still the relativity part to where you know this person also I knew whiskey when he used to live in our neighborhood. And so yeah. people have that as the well, right? Relatability. Relatability, right? So for Big Brother housemates, they've only just you're or probably only hearing or seeing the person for the first time in your life today and then three months later which is i mean big brother is digitally three months in fact before three months what am i saying by the second to third week they already have their core fans that are ready to go and, go and meet people at their office to see what do you mean you said this about uh, this person and i i want to and because relatability is comes, no more the, where it comes relatability from. you can say is a bit of it i guess you know i mean yeah this person started from the bottom the, her, her background was harsh she grew up with only her mom and but started. you are ready to defend it's your still, whole it's still so like crazy. bro even one of my friends taller Nibad, shout out to you but it's like when she was on the show or even outside i can defend her because that is my friend. I knew her before Big Brother. I have seen her come exactly. up. I actually had a relationship with her. So I can defend or something. Unless it's something I can't defend. You understand? I mean, but there's a but basis. For people, yeah. Thank you. There's people now that, like you said, I've nev- you've never seen Tasha. You've never heard- met her before. You watched her saying she's a fine girl in the house. But you are screaming at your colleague from, from- 9 a.m. <laughs> until 4 p.m arguing about these people that you have never nobody is saying don't be a fan and that's why i say i'm not attacking anybody you can't do what you like you understand it's the same way now you can see me arguing about basketball it's the way girls will say but you go and sit down and argue about basketball or football for hours for nba players you never meet fair enough yeah but there's a skill those guys exactly. are clean. i was about to say this like basketball there's... player that guy is jumping out the gym, yeah, yeah, shooting they're, from they're, halfway. They're He's doing a skill yeah. that make me say, "Wow, I memorized." Footballer, same thing. Can your best big brother meet apart from maybe um shakes um go and curl ball? <laughs> yeah, no, and, and, and apart, top from, apart from that, even <laughs> again, you see, for the footballers, there's still the there's still the um, factor of the longevity. There's the the gro- you've literally watch, also watched. I watched them this player from exactly. when he was a 21 year old debut or you or you've watched the team shuffle players and when when, so girls, a, when girls attack us now saying you people are ready to down the line for ronaldo and messi do you know the impact those men have had on our lives and not just that the years of growth Again, what it's different if ronaldo came this month now Guys, in since three months, secondary school we watched ronaldo and i don't think people understand like to the ladies that watch menism let me explain to you why we cry over ronaldo messi and or just any kind of athlete since really. i was in secondary school that man was the best player in the world when I was in secondary school, both of them. I'm now an adult. I'm 30 plus years old. And they are still, I mean, obviously you argue now, but but they have cemented themselves as in they maintained the best for 10 plus years. There's a reason I I idolize those people. I've seen their work. Even behind the scenes, I see you go to the gym. I see you work. I see you talk. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. Big brother and, and that's why i said the factor in that one also applies to you know the music artists you see them so even you see again this is not us even saying they shouldn't like big brother house yeah of course we're asking about what and again you guys can actually tell us give us reasons you think you know are behind this why you know where does that toxic because actually big brother fans are known to be toxic so first of all where does that toxicity come from exactly now two i mean, most times when the so say for example i get on my twitter say and i say things like um this Tasha baby is being, is being so toxic in the house. Her fans will come. For, meanwhile, it's evidence. We can all see. We can all see her displaying toxic traits. But they, they will come and they'll say things like, hey, well, is your father not toxic? Is your... 
ah ah is your own father not toxic like what the fu- <laughs> what so you know and I, I, again again it's it's fun to watch behind the scenes and just see how people are going crazy at each other but I've always been so intrigued. I Where like does that. that come from? Again, this somebody defend me like that. Go for, ah, boy, no, no, of course, <laughs> it's nice on the receiving end. But I, I see, I try to think as the... Hey, I try to put myself in the shoes of someone who is not doing so well, but putting their last cobble for this person's life to be better. What, hmm. So what is it? I mean, I get it that there's a part of you that wants to feel like you've contributed to that person's growth, which but makes it's sense. R- but it's, but it's wrong. At what cost? And why are you driven by that? I so, can support... You yeah. can support in so many ways that doesn't affect your own livelihood. How are you still trying to make money and you're giving somebody money that doesn't need it? Like... Yeah, so again, well, I guess you guys let us know in the comments. We don't exactly know. Exactly, I feel, again, it's not an attack on on anybody. Core fans, so we can't exactly. It's not an attack on anybody, nor attack on Big Brother, the brand, other because I, like I said, I like it. Our friends there is just. We're trying to understand where does this stem from. Yeah, so, and, and why does it have to always be this toxic exchange between you know the different fans of the different housemates? Again, but I guess the thing is like let's also not lie. Like celebrities and knights also don't make it easier because they play into it. Like everybody oh, so has right, this yes. god complex now, yes, and it's yes, like because sure. b- again, why well, I, I brought up that poverty topic earlier because you, again, if you're a celeb doing okay now. And over a thousand street boys to scream your name. Which human you takes a strong person, not a strong man, strong person to not let that get in your head. Though. Of course, agreed. When the, boys they hear you, they oh, got boss, or oh, got this. Every single forget celebs, even people on streets in Lagos, we all have it now. Yeah, and I I, I fully agree on that. You know, and I I think um again like it's, it's good to love. I mean, it happens with every aspect. Don't forget that we started off this topic by saying in every single aspect of mm. being a celebrity, whatever industry, be it sports, be it music, be it, uh, you know, the movie industry, blah, blah, blah. People have their core fans, right? No doubt. But I would hardly see people arguing that uh, maybe like an actor like uh, Denzel Washington is better. And then you start seeing toxic exchanges. I don't know if that makes sense, right? Because you can't say that these people are not established celebrities with their core fan base but you're not going to see like people saying your father is stupid How can you no say it will never get about your dad denzel um, no it does like barbershop talk like uh, when you're amongst your friends now yeah, that you're like what do you mean denzel did not what are uh, you crazy yeah, no, of course but yeah, that's, not that I'm that's different you. because you're also arguing that this person is more skillful than this person skillful but with, but with this one there's just there's just something I don't know it's, it's hard to really pin like, onto it but I'll really say guys because it's not like we're idiots but it's not exactly, it's just trying, yeah. to yeah, trying to understand it yeah so yeah guys I mean just let us know we get the part where you know you argue about the person's craft and skill set and say that this person's better than the other but I just we always wanted to know like what, what what's the core thing behind being a big brother fan that lets yeah, you man. want to defend the person so badly again just, I guess let us know so, right so um. Yeah, we've talked about that so much. I, was, I and I said let's talk about it a little. Anyways, yeah. So I wanted us to talk about something, and I it was it's, it's just something, and I think we even discussed this off camera. Oh. You know, it's it's people always make men seem like all we like in the opposite sex is the physical, right? Mm. Or oh, we just like oh she has a nice body, nice. Uh, but what are the things you like that are non-sexual in a woman? Like, well, you just give me like a rough example of one of the two things you like and why you like those things confidence i'm very attracted to women that are confident not just in themselves but the things they do so it's like do you carry yourself in a way that is just like i'm that chick like you get what i'm right. saying like there's a way that I, and the reason i say that is just because like for me i'm also a confident person like i can be shy and reserved in some things but naturally i'm confident so i like that in a woman too i like i like funny women and when I say f- funny women, it's just like they're a bit more carefree than the average woman. Because, you know, sometimes, and again, I'm going to start rephrasing my words. Because if I start saying Lagos women now, they'll say, and I hate <laughs> saying, I can't lie to you. I'm just going to say it on camera now. See, all that branding and all that shit was intentional. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing, all you Lagos women. I wasn't attacking you people. Hey, this is a business. I love oh you. Thank you. Because you gave me a platform. But I will support you today and night. And guess what? I live here. So I have to see Lagos women. Right. So you get what I'm saying? But I like funny women that are a bit more carefree. And when I say than the average woman is because sometimes... You meet some women that are not like, I guess, funny or just a bit more standoffish. Rigid, yeah. Yeah, rigid. But, you know, them carefree ones that are still very confident, I like that. I like women that are kind and respectful. And I don't mean just to me. I mean, 
mainly not even just me because i know how i carry myself you try to disrespect me no problem we ain't gonna have this relationship but it's more of how do you treat other people around you how do you treat even the worker that yeah. might not be valued as much how do you treat them because that's going to say a lot about your character as a person because yeah, sure. you can have a fine face but ugly ass personality um there's so much um te- you said non-sexual because i about to say physical features like nice smile all that that's not non- that's non-sexual no? mm, yeah it is non-sexual yeah that is non-sexual i like non-sexual. intelligent women oh my yeah. god if you're smarter than me ah fair teach me baby <laughs> teach me because i'll teach you something like don't get me wrong I, like it's a value exchange i can't just be saying come on I'll, I'll go teach you things but me too, i like women that are smart like that inquisitive like you get what i'm saying like make me think outside the box like damn i didn't think about that shit because there's a lot you can learn from women like i learned so much from girls like agreed. huh agreed yeah i've learned so much from girls because girls will give you free game like that's the thing if they actually fuck with you like they'll give you so much free game um I don't know how to say this. Like, you know how you feel like there's some girls that have that motherly instinct. Right. So, like, caring. Let's just say caring as the umbrella. As the umbrella. There's caring and they... Uh, I don't know how to put... Like, not that I want you to be my mother. I bet go. You I know, know what you mean. Like, that. they literally have that... I will step in and just take control. I will step in and, like, kind of be... I know what you mean. Like, it's... Yeah. I know what you mean. It's a... Yeah. yeah. It's a motherly... It's a motherly yeah. nature. That's what it, and I then, mean. um... I like tough women too at the same. It's weird. As much as I like the soft, you can't just be you got I like tough women. Not too tough. <laughs> I beg, no toxic shit over doing. I beg. I've oh, dealt with those goodness. ones and I beg. I'm not going yeah. back ever. Thank you, Jesus. But there are some girls that, anyways, flashback. Tough right. a little bit like you're not just a push like no matter what, if you're my girl, I'm not gonna let anybody just come meet you and all that shit. But if I'm not there by chance, can you hold your own? Mm. Or maybe if I'm in a situation, can you come and maybe just... Because there's some women that will come in a situation, that, no matter what size, if they should talk or even just see that side, you two, you go just say, ah, I mm-hmm. like that shit. Like, Fair you enough. know, like, ah, I don't know, just say push. My baby's not just say push over. Like, push over. Yeah. What? Like, that? Don't let me call my baby. Like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair that's enough. I, Fair I'm enough. I, I, want, that. I want that I kind of that. girl that... It's some girls that try, I'll come. Don't let me call my girl. Yeah, no. I, I, I see that. I see that. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. But yeah, um, I was sorry. I'm thinking about what about you? Yeah. What about you? Uh, yeah, mine is also. Well, of course, I do like someone who is kind. So I feel like the kind, caring, those ones kind of like are free, you know, no brainers. I hope because I don't want to imagine there are people who do not want kind people or who do not like kind people. But what I find attractive that is non sexual, one of the things is. I like people who are willing to learn, Mm. right? Because it's very difficult to deal with someone who believes their way or the highway. Hmm. Very difficult, right? And um, when I, when I, when I, especially if the person is seemingly more intelligent than I am, if the person is seemingly more intelligent than I am, but still willing to learn things that I'm possibly better at, just, you know, certain aspects of life that I'm just better at, and they don't come with the energy of, Oh, they still know better than me in that. They, mm. they, they give this, oh, really tell me more. I, I don't actually know anything about that. It gives me this, mm, I like that she's, she, she understands that mm. in some aspects of life, you should just sit back and learn rather than always, I know it, I know it, I know it. I'm better than you at that, right? And um, I also like open-mindedness. Yeah. I don't really like people who um, are so closed in either the, social construct they've they've grown up in Mm -hmm. or cultural values and so you know that was another thing i'm sorry virtue of that cultural values that's a very very big one i don't like people that are too very big you know be open-minded because when you're too caged into that it defines all your decisions generally and it defines how you relate to people it defines how judgmental you can be because i cannot stand judgmental people because again judgmental people will always come from the angle of it can never be them their life will show you that it will happen to you too, you know. So, you know, I I like people who believe that, like I like I said earlier, it can happen to you. And so, by virtue, you're like, you know, now nah, let me actually understand that person's situation. Let me understand how best we can go for from this. And uh, rather than say you, you are a witch, I this because of this certain thing that they've done that you feel you're better at, or that you feel that your own life can never put you in that situation, you know. So, 
I like people who aren't judgmental, who are very open-minded and can understand that things can happen to people to make them make certain decisions, right? Now, not saying that by being open-minded, you're allowing everything. No. Being open-minded is you're welcoming the concept of it. Now, whether or not you choose to accept it mm. or choose to adhere or follow it is now up to you, but you're welcoming it. You're not instantly condemning it and saying, that one can never, God forbid. No, yeah, right. So I like people like that. I also like, um, I like someone who can adapt easily, mm. right? I like, I like that we get into a situation and you're able to just figure out that, okay, we're here now. We can't come out of this for a while. How do we just and merge that, with this? I was assuming what I said, like, I don't want to push over, but like, take control. Just right, in case, yeah. like, all right, babe, no, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> They'll be looking at that her sounds, like that. That sounds too personal. Sounds like you eh? literally already think. No, I'm just saying. Like there are some girls you've been with. Like yeah, I've yeah, been I in this situation mean. where you've been with some girls. Like there's some shit that's happening. Nobody's saying as a man you no go take lead. But there's a lot. Instantly, they're like, they're fuck, you're like, you're like yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Right. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. We're listening. Oh my god, God forgive me, but okay. There was a time I was seeing a girl, right? Yeah. And there was a Sunday at Ilashe. Okay. That she came for. She's yeah. not my babe. I'm just seeing her. And I'm going to compare the situations because they happen more than once. Okay. So the situation, there's a lot going on. I'm stressing. I'm panicking, trying to figure out shit behind the scenes because obviously the party is going on. Nobody's going to see the stress behind the scenes. This girl is just standing there looking at me. I'm there panicking. I'm trying to go out there. She's just like, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to be here. What the fuck? <laughs> like, all right, but then at the end, you're now still coming to meet me. And you're okay, all right, let's go. I'm ready to go, all that stuff. So it's just like, okay, I'm going to remember that shit. Then fast forward another, let's say a year later or so, same situation, different, different girl. girl. As soon as the girl saw them coming to meet me, this girl's just standing, listening to everything. Then when I'm now trying to think, this girl comes to me, are you okay? Like, talk to me, what's the situation and all that. So I'm just very sorry. Like, okay. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Breathe. Okay, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? Ah, see love. <laughs> see love. See the difference. See love. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, man. So how attractive that shit is. You're like, you're not even coming to add to the problem. You're already like, what is the solution? God damn. This is, and then there's some girls, like I said, that first girl just say, okay. The fuck? And you wonder why I'm not taking you seriously or I'm just treating you like this. Why won't I? Yeah, and you know, the funny thing is if someone wants to give the excuse of, oh, it's not my fault, it's not what I understand. Do you know, even something as little as, are you okay? So I know, I, I mean, I don't know anything about throwing parties and stuff like that, but if I can help you with anything. Initiative. Yeah. Initiative. Because yeah. that's also showing me, is this a girl I can take seriously? Because, okay, let's look in the future. If we have children now, I know I'm already jumping the gun, but that's how I think if I'm going to take you seriously. No, no, but it's, it's valid. If it's we valid. have children, are you always going to rely on me, me, me? Because nobody, and again, I'm not saying as a man, I'm not going to be a provider for my family. I'm not going to be like a leader of my household with my wife. But mm -hmm. there's leadership. Whether you like it or not, leadership takes away both ways. Uh leadership happens both ways in a relationship in terms of there's times the dad is going to be the leader there's times the mom's going to be the leader but they always come together but behind the scenes maybe the mom is following the dad and sometimes the yeah, dad yeah. will follow the mom's lead so i need a woman that can do that right not that is oh yeah what next <laughs> yeah what next yeah, yeah i get that. It, i mean it can definitely be exhausting to always be the one to lead especially because half the time you're learning as a follower from other people like so you know a lot of times you need you need a break from being the one to always make decisions always take control because at what point then do you have to be the one to relax and you know follow the advice of somebody else right yeah. and follow the directions of somebody else so yeah it's definitely like something that I, I definitely agree with that it's very valid one of the things i just remember that i actually find very attractive in a woman that is non-sexual is um <sighs> let me word this right Okay, so um, one of the things I find non-sexual... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. No, good. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I find non-sexual is, you know, not being easily swayed. I, I mean, people will call this peer pressure, right? But it's not just peer pressure. There's also the fact that you're not being pressured by anything, but it's self-imposed. Especially other girls. Especially. You know, so, like, other girls don't pressure you or social media girls don't pressure you. Yeah, but you're, you're, but somehow, that, but again, most of the time, the pressure is self-imposed. That's the one that I have a problem with. You see, it's different if like you're in a working field and in your field, it's always thrown in your face because mm -hmm. it's in your field. You have to experience it daily. Whereas it's just being marketed to you. And when I say market, for example, lifestyle, 
Mm. Right, lifestyle is a thing now that is very popular on social media. Mm. So people just open up their page, post where they're traveling, go on trips, take go on this dinner. They are buying me flowers. I'm riding in this nice car. It's lifestyle, right? Now, for people, that's a business. The more they are showing you lifestyle, the more people that are running lifestyle-based businesses want to use them as a promotive platform, right, or a pro- promotional platform rather. And so, that's business for them. But you that is being marketed that social media feed is looking like, man, this girl that I knew from yesterday, now she's already driving Benz. This girl I knew from yesterday is already flying private jets. And me now, eh? And it's because she answered this big man. Me, I'm saying that I want to be a good girl. I'm not... Now, now, right? No one is saying don't have your personal oh God, ambition intrus- in life. My intrusive thoughts want to say so much. Yeah, yeah I know. Fuck. Relax it. Hold it Go in. ahead. Hold I it don't. in. Go eh? ahead. <laughs> So, you know, nothing is wrong with choosing a path to life that you feel like works for you. If you want to go with that big man that will sponsor your life, no problem. If you want to go with this, not, do your thing. My problem here is now you are being influenced by somebody who is not even really trying to influence you. They are just posting what they feel works for them business-wise and they are trying to capture a certain crowd of people so that they can create a platform and businesses can come to them. Then you have now taken that and you've now said, put it on your head though, that ah, this one that this girl job is, I'm I'm feeling I feel like my life is not okay anymore. I say it. You um, can eat, you, you can eat when you want, you can buy the things you want. But what the problem is that you're not buying the expensive things because you are not and now your life is shit to you because that person has set a standard that you have decided. In fact, they didn't set the standard. You saw that and made that your standard. And now it has now influenced your life. So you see what I mean by it's not peer pressure, it's self-imposed pressure. I cannot stand it. No. And damn, that was deep. And you see, women, when you hear us say these things, nobody's nagging. We're telling you a perspective of men that we're never going to say in public. You, Which man is going to casually open up and be saying all this stuff? <laughs> we, let, let's think about it. So at least hear what we're trying to say. Because, bro, if you know how many times guys talk about that stuff among themselves, because a lot of girls will start saying, eh, you guys are just intimidated because you don't have money, you don't have stuff. Okay, madam. First off, it's not you that's going to count my pockets because you don't watch my hours of how much work I put in. Let's yeah, start there. That's Number right. two, life is a journey. You cannot compare me to a 50-year-old man that's established with a wife and children. Or even, that, or even someone that just, by happenstance, they stumbled on a good deal even if they were young. They stumbled on a good deal. Life uh, like, I, okay, somebody got a deal. Let, but I'm just giving the yeah, examples yeah, the, of the what we see. Ones, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, the older guy that has a life that's giving you this, you cannot compare those things and whether you like it or not i have peace of mind at the end of the day that almost when i get my shit i worked for it not illegally nothing i got my shit so me i'd rather have a girl that will appreciate the journey of getting not that i'm saying i want a girl you can't wait to me for 20 years before of course no, not, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> it, it will come soon you understand yeah. the bentley's up. but what i'm saying is let it be a genuine reason you are with me there's girls I've seen that chase that lifestyle that nobody's pressuring you, but you are pressuring yourself because of what you see around, which is fine because guys go through that same pressure, especially in a place like Lagos. You think a lot of us young niggas are not um, intimidated when they see all these chairmen and big men, they come. Or when you see boys or something that just got deal, they just carry all the babes around or the chairman carrying all the babes around. You think that's not rubbing off in our face every day. But guess what? Let me tell you something. Respect the men that it doesn't get to them. That's a strong-minded individual. And that's the kind of thing we're looking for in women. Because do you think a lot of us cannot go and get bar in some ways if we really wanted to. And I mean <laughs> illegally. Yeah. If we really wanted to. Yeah. If I really wanted to have some bar right now, oh, I'll be swimming. May not have been legal, but I'll be swimming. But I have a more... And whether I like to say Namora or carry you, it's okay. I'd rather have the money that, like I say, I can sleep at night. I can work for you, understand? And I don't want the girls that are coming to me for the money. Because guess what? When that money finishes, they're gone. Yeah, I've had them. I've had the girls that trust me, the bodies that you're like, God damn, 10 over 10, all that. Once business or something was fucked up now, <laughs> she's yeah, gone. And honestly, I, I, it's, it's a very big turn off for me. If I just, I'm someone I'm talking to and I hear the person say things like, man, it's like I should just even, and I mean on a serious note, like they're thinking that, you know, they regret not living that life instead because if they lived that life, they had so many propositions. So what, you are just fucking old niggas now just to have us all lifestyle? My, my own is even that. If if you feel bad for, if you feel this bad for not doing those things that the other girls are doing to make money or live the life that they're living, then 
don't force it just do it let me just know that i'm not supposed to be here at all but then to have to live with someone who is daily regretting that they are being you de- like regret decent or and generic. you're acting like you can't you're not in control of your life not that it's easy exactly and nobody's saying look women nobody's knocking you because be smart i say i always joke and say well if i was a body in lagos i'd have had two houses in banana by now and girls i say you think it's easy i say see not the hustler i am right now as a man <laughs> i know exactly. so, so ah. um, that's, what, that's what i said that you can live the life you want it's a hustling spirit we know that like, you know you can do that because there's a goal usually it might not be you know the the most self-appealing journey but you know that you have a goal right and so, <laughs> sorry, my interesting thought has to say this. Yeah. I want to give girls some advice. See, because I know some girls right now, they always attack me and say, You think it's easy when I always say I have two houses in Banana? You see, eh? You girls, you have power. I've seen girls, contracts that you are going to try and get big men to sign. The big men will be washing boys away. That yeah. same girl walking, that mouth squeak. Yep. So, no, no, you guys. You think when men are doing NDAs and all these contracts, you people can't be doing the same shit. See, any man that wants to move to me or date me, you will, you will sign agreement. <laughs> you will sign agreement. All those just say, I want you to stay the night. No problem. Here's sign my these agreements, but you will pay 10 million to this account first. And you have to do the 70%. See, the way I go do that, I said, I'll have and, and the worst part is that, like, <laughs> It's, it's not about because people i'm joking oh by the way i bet because some people now got it yeah beg, but it's, it's, go it's, ahead. It's, it's, I, I guess they also feel like because it's a because we're also in a playing that's that life is in a playing field where it's a beauty in the eye of the beholder situation so there's no generic beauty that works for all the big men you, you can be the one that does not have yansha does not have the but that big man wants you he's the one you're the one he wants and by virtue of that those you know those contracts I, ask, so- I want to ask the girls an honest question and this is not something to attack you guys this is just I, I can't picture it because it's like okay if the vice versa was for us sleeping with older women for bar it's praised amongst men saying oh you de- you sleeping with an older girl right but okay because that's what i said i want to look at both sides because i don't it's want women to- amongst, so with guys, guys, now, with guys now they praise it with girls they praise it with women they always look down on them for doing it right in terms of if a guy gets with an older woman. But at least sometimes, because they're the guys that get with some older women that's like, ew. Oh, yeah, sure. But then there's all the guys that chase older women that are like fine, good looking. And vice versa for the girls. There some older men they go good looking guy and all that. But for the girls that actually do like the lifestyle that you just date guys or be with men that have the bar, but they're ugly. Like, how are you feeling? Like, how is your so I I'm sorry. I mean, I spoke I to can't, I spoke to one or two people. I can't I can't man. fathom that. I have to be even me, I have to be attracted to you to some point. At least looks wise, personality wise, something it's that ambition. but some girls just go with any Tom because Dick looking am- hair. Ambition. I have seen some girls out with some niggas that I'm just like, what the hell am I doing? If if it's not money, like can you you are not proud to be out with him? I can see it in your face. You know you're not proud to be out with him. But yet you still go and do the same thing every time where you go out to your Zazas, you go out to the same place, you go and position yourself, go for the same kind of guy, hoping for the same kind of money. Then later on you go and complain about the same cycle you are stuck in. What what? So again, right, I, I mean what I've gotten to understand is, you know, different situations different responses and I that's why i want to know and your honest so truth it's, no it's and I, I suppose of course this cannot apply to every single one of them but for the few people that i've had the chance to just talk to i've had times where i'll just talk to this person based on the situation they're in because again i bring this no judgment energy and so of so course people of always course. open up to me right so i've also gotten to find that it's the ambition that drives them right so when when you when you have a certain goal especially from how you have been raised and how you don't want to have to live that life anymore and you want out of that you know fair, fair. Yeah. there are certain things you just have to know it's just you look at it from the angle of somebody who uh somebody who maybe their family was good and they used to do well then all of a sudden one relative died and everything's gone to shit and so you have to do certain jobs to bring your family out of that and so there are certain jobs you won't be proud of doing but you know that I'm only in this shit because but then the I'm question to come is nobody is saying no. Yeah. I don't disagree to that one because bro, the jobs people are doing right now that you don't know mm-hmm. that they're hustling. Mm-hmm. That's different. Mm-hmm. I don't knock anybody for that one because mm-hmm. I've been there too. Yes, I am talking about the sexual acts of certain women that it's that's, ambition still. unless you're saying that's also a job to in terms yeah, of look, I got to sleep with see, these niggas at, to see, get look, what look I want. At it, look at it like this, right? Everybody has to bring some kind of value. Not everybody has the threshold for. 
I must work to make money. It's like not everybody, right? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And so some people have seen, so it's more like a what do I have that sells that I can give? It's like person. for girls now that consciously because there's some girls that sleep with married men that they don't know. Okay. Then and there's then some there's girls that sleep with married men that they know. Okay. But they know the benefits or money they're getting from that married man. It's like what goes on in your mind? So what again is still ambition? See, ambition will drive you to the point where once you just have that goal, it's the, the, the process to the goal is no more your concern. And that's why you also find that even... Because you think... Why don't you also think that criminals who, you know, go and they know that in the process of the criminal job they're doing, they may have to kill a few people. Mm-hmm. It's the end goal. That's, it's, when you think about Fair. what you're about to gain from this, you know, exercise, we say, then you're not like, okay, yeah, you know, the process almost stops matching at the point. Maybe in the Can beginning... Can I ask a question? Would, yeah. Unless it's the wrong bodies I'm looking at, but what are some of these girls gaining? Because I've seen the girls that you see their life don't change, they've gone their own money now, they flipped it. But then the girls now that there's nothing to show for it now. So again, that one is a different. It's a lifestyle thing. That one we can't. We, we can't. I can't. We can't explain Fair. that. And like that I said, it's not. Thing. It's not that we're knocking or attacking. It's just like this is genuinely. I have never. Like again, there's some girls that have opened up to me about this shit, but I'll never talk about it or ask because it's none of my business. But obviously, being in the industry, seeing it, I just wonder as a guy. And that's why we do this podcast. It's like what actually goes through your mind because I don't get mind. Like I thought yeah, I had. It's, it's like ambition. I'll be. I talk some shit, and there's some stuff I can't do. But there's some stuff I can't do. Like, you get what I'm saying? Because, again, maybe it's my morals. Maybe it's my pride. Because I'm like, yo, there's got to be another way. Okay, I, well, I, why, I, are we even, why are we even going too far? I mean, you would also think... You've also seen some guys... Niger- well, I won't say Nigerians, but African guys who marry questionable looking women. You know, no judgment. No, I said that earlier. Yeah. I yeah. said it's no, both, so ways, I'm saying, both I'm, ways. I'm, I'm trying to say that, you see. In that aspect, some women will also look at the guy and be like... I get it that, yeah, you, you had some of it, but ex- this is bad, right? Now, again, no offense to whoever looks physical. We don't judge anyone always for looking physical. Always produce some good children, though. But, but, now, <laughs> but now, it's always clear that it's ambition. Can, can you see that? In that guy's light, it's because the ambition is now out there and known. It's now a popular thing so much that even the you know immigration agencies even know about it. But you see, the truth is, at that point, you're willing to leave your home country to whatever country they're going to, right? You're willing to leave your home country where you were doing a relatively decent job hey, yo! to their country to be a caretaker, to be a cleaner, whatever it is, because there's an ambition. See, the ambition... No, no, no. Is, That's why I said I agree that one, exactly. the cleaning or not. Like, no, it's, it's the same it's thing. The, it's, it's the one about marrying the... Like, let's call it what it is. You see some Niger guys or Igbo women that you're like, what? It's ambition, bro. Hell? And that's they're, what I said. They're thinking they my children very good-looking children. My children must have green card. I, too, must have access to this foreign country. There's some business in here, but how do I get in? I think... Ambition. And I guess, like I say, it's a pre- we talked about it one time, like, it's a place of privilege that sometimes I know I speak from because, obviously, I have a passport, so I'm blessed. It's a privilege because it's very easy to point the finger. And that's why I never put It's very easy to point the finger until you're in that situation that you're like, hmm, you think he's easy. You get yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, I get it. I get it. Wow. That's... Well, I mean, we deviated from. So I had one more thing I wanted to say about what I like or what I find attractive. Okay, in... true, true. Oh, yeah, on, we, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I find attractive in um, oh, yeah, but that is non-sexual. Up. And I think I'll just use this one to round up. And for me, it is women who can really introspect. So, and I say that being that you know, I like a woman who can look really like deep into herself. I know the things that need to be corrected or changed that she must have been conditioned by. Let me give you an example. So let's say, um, okay. So let's say by virtue of the fact that you've grown up around cheating men, right? What you just believe men are is just, men just cheats. Men just, which is fair. You've been exposed to that. But you see, the only reason why somebody who is exposed to that drives with that generalization is because they don't do any introspection there's just no why do i think men cheese there's no there's no inner questioning there's just this is what i've been exposed to you people are liars people like this and that's fine obviously that's just one example of many right but you know it's also the same way the conditioning that men should be the ones always pays for the woman's everything like there's no part of the woman woman women are just there to exist it's not meant they're not meant to work right there are people that have minds like that right mm. and it's because they are not living through their own their own uh definition of what life should be 
they are living through the conditions they've been. You know, okay, this was, and so there's no introspection. There's no why am I living my life this way? Is it because I want to, or because they've told me this is how I should do it? I like people who've done introspection. That is, you've looked within yourself. You can still look within yourself and say, okay, oh, yes, I want my life to be. Men should be paying for me for everything. At least you've gone deep in. You went deep and said, and you've this understood. is what I want. And I respect, and I respect those that. people that is like, okay, this is your self Exactly. So be it. Exactly. As, as opposed to, it's very evident that you can't even explain why you're doing it. Mm. Right? There's no there's no knowledge behind why you do the things you do. Uh-huh. You just believe that. That's why. So yeah. That's, and that's <laughs> why some girls wonder yeah. why I didn't text back. But hey. So yeah. So when I see someone who... I actually hear them say, to be honest, men are cheese. The only reason I think that way is because I grew up around. The, I love to hear like, that. Because like, it means there's a conversation that can be had that is healthy. Not, no, men are just this. Fuck this. Exactly. No, or, I'm not ready to or, that. Or you just believe that, in fact, this is the one I, this is the one that <laughs> a lot of people to now stick already. So you see that relationship between children, parents, or parents, children, where they just believe. Hey, uh, no matter what my dad does, it's still my dad I respect him. Now, it's still my dad I'll do what he says I should do. Now, I like people who've broken out of that a little bit and understood that their parents are still human beings. Human beings who are filled with flaws, filled with this. You know, we were raised as Africans to believe that um, what's the person's older than you? They are correct. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, a lot of us have broken out of it. Now, I like people who understood that. Okay, well, I can respect you because, you know, you've earned it. You've, you've done certain things. You've seen more things than me, exactly. but it doesn't mean I but have to respect you. I would also you. argue with you when I feel like you're wrong. I would also tell... So, even when somebody says, ah, uh, I don't think that, that thing your dad did was right, too. And then you start saying, don't talk about my father like that. <laughs> yeah, you see, uh, again, I'm just like, this just gives, it just gives your shallow. So, don't worry. I can't really... Wow, as shallow, opposed yeah. to, you know what, actually, yeah, you're right. I mean, I also agree that he did. He should have handled that a little differently. There's no disrespect in me calling out somebody's dad if they've done something wrong. But the way your first argument is, is my father. You cannot talk about my father. I'm just like, yeah, you know what? There's no, there's no discussion. There's no story. ready to have, <laughs> so, ready to have it. Yeah, there, so I mean, um, those are the few things. Say that your comments I, on really, there yeah. and say your comments on here. Fellas, what are some of the non-sexual things you like in a woman? And for ladies, based off some of the things we've talked about today, we want to hear your opinions. So let us know for sure. Um, we're going to be back here again next week, as we always are, mm-hmm. to have some of these conversations. Because I actually like today's one. It's a healthy conversation because I would never have these conversations on like social platforms like Twitter and all that. Because oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm not ready to argue with anybody. I mean, I'm not just that. You're not even getting the constructive Constructive. Because yeah. like I said, we weren't knocking or attacking anybody. Like, And that's why I said sometimes with the podcast, I always tell people like, you have to listen to a whole episode to understand perspective because it's very easy for us to get lost in the social media age with a clip oh, or yeah, a highlight. For sure. For sure. But if you listen to the whole thing now, then you'll be able to understand like, oh, this is the convert. Okay, I understand it. But yeah, we'll be back again soon. Again, make sure you subscribe to all our channels and we appreciate you guys. Do you have any self-plugs? Um, no, not for now. Just uh, stay healthy. Stay alive. The country is a mess right now. But nah, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, so yeah, Stay safe and... First episode of Check and Balance, ladies and gentlemen. The DJ Battle Game Show is officially out on YouTube now. Go and check. We have some of the best DJs that are all fighting for one million naira. And we'll keep this going. Self-plug. All right. So, until next time, I'm Murwa Gunkoya. And I'm Michael Shonaiwo. And we will see you again.